Determination of cerebrospinal fluid protein and glucose concentrations are routinely done and may reveal useful clinical information. The normal CSF protein concentration ranges from 23 to 38 mg per deciliter in adults. Elevations in the CSF protein concentration can occur in both infectious and non-infectious conditions, including conditions associated with obstruction of cerebrospinal fluid flow. CSF protein can be elevated by a subarachnoid hemorrhage or a traumatic lumbar puncture. The presence of cerebrospinal fluid bleeding results in approximately 1 mg of protein per deciliter for every 1,000 red blood cells present per microliter. Brain tumors, stroke, Guillain-Barre syndrome, and systemic disorders such as hypothyroidism are examples of conditions that cause increased cerebrospinal fluid protein. The CSF protein concentration may be mildly elevated in patients with diabetes mellitus. Cerebrospinal fluid protein elevations may persist for weeks or months following recovery from meningitis, and while they indicate that something is wrong, they are a nonspecific finding and have little utility in assessing the response to therapy. Measuring glucose levels in CSF can also be helpful. Low cerebrospinal fluid glucose concentration may occur in a variety of infectious and non-infectious pathologic conditions. Elevated CSF glucose concentrations only occur in the setting of hyperglycemia. CSF concentrations less than 18 mg per deciliter are strongly predictive of bacterial meningitis. In contrast, the CSF glucose concentration is typically normal during most viral central nervous system infections. Low CSF glucose concentrations can also occur in non-infectious conditions, including patients with leptomeningeal carcinomatosis, leukemia, central nervous system lymphoma, severe subarachnoid hemorrhages, or neurosarcoidosis. These patients may have cellular or inflammatory infiltrates that disrupt the active transport of glucose into the cerebrospinal fluid. Hypoglycemic patients who present with central nervous system symptoms may have low CSF glucose concentrations. In the setting of hyperglycemia, low cerebrospinal fluid glucose may not be recognized if only the absolute CSF glucose concentration is considered. So in the setting of hyperglycemia, the CSF fluid glucose to serum glucose ratio should be calculated. The normal cerebrospinal fluid to serum glucose ratio is greater than 0.6. Determination of the cerebrospinal fluid lactate concentration has been suggested as a useful test to differentiate bacterial from viral meningitis. The mean CSF lactate level in bacterial meningitis is approximately 16.5 millimoles per liter where it is only 2.4 millimoles per liter in viral meningitis. Two meta-analyses concluded that the diagnostic accuracy of CSF lactate was superior to that of CSF white blood cell count, glucose, and protein concentration in differentiating bacterial from viral meningitis, although the sensitivity was lower in patients who received antimicrobial treatment prior to lumbar puncture. Lastly, note that cerebrospinal fluid lactate may be elevated in patients with other central nervous system diseases such as seizure disorders and cerebral ischemia. So I hope you liked this video. Absolutely make sure to check out the course this video was taken from and to register for a free trial account which will give you access to selected chapters of the course. If you want to learn how MetMastery can help you become a great clinician, make sure to watch the About MetMastery video. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.